Welcome to MacroCode. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So today we are going to learn something about uh, rate limiting. So that is, we're going to learn how to use rate limiting in SP.NET Core Web API. So rate, rate limiting is actually a technique to limit the number of requests to a uh, server or even uh, to an API. And we actually have four rate limiting algorithms that you can actually learn with. So you have the fixed window, the sliding window, the token uh, bucket, and you have the con con concurrency. So today we are going to learn one of them called uh, concurrency, and we're going to actually create a simple API and actually try to add rate limiting on our API. So to begin, we are going to create a new project. Then we are just going to select the speed.net core web API. Then I'll just begin with uh, giving our project the name. So I'll just choose my folder. So I'll just have it there. Then here I'll just say rate limiting. So I'll just give it the name rate limiting API. Then I'll proceed. Then here I'll just choose uh, none. Then I'll also enable open API support and use controllers and I'm using .NET 8. So if I just click create, then I'll have my API uh, created. So for those who are new to this channel, consider watching our videos and you can actually, uh, so let me just see what you've done. So if we just launch our app, you should be able to have our API uh, already created and you can actually try it and test it. So let's just see. So let me just uh, open the API and you can see this is our API. We are calling it rate limiting API. And you can try and get some of the details here. So you can see you are getting some of the responses here. And that is a uh, cool. So what I want us to do now is I want us to begin by doing something. So I want us to install a new get package called SP.NET Core Rate Limiting. So let's just go back here and you're going to install here a new get package. So just say new get package. And here we can say uh, SP.NET, Microsoft.SP.NET Core Rate Limiting. So I want us to, to look for that package. So here you search, just, just search a rate limiting and you can actually install uh, SP.NET Core Rate Limit, and you'll realize that we actually have that new get package here, SP.NET Core Rate Limit. And when you now come to our program.cs, we need to do some uh, things. So on the program.cs, we need to actually register our uh, rate limiter. So we'll just do here builder.services.add rate limiter. So this is it. Then on here, we can actually have a uh, rate limiter options. Then you can actually say here. So you can have various options here. So I want us to say rate limiter. Then we are going to do dot. Then I'll say add uh, concurrency limiter. So that is what we'll, we'll be using. So if, if you do this, you realize that you have various policies. You have the uh, concurrency, you have fixed window, sliding window, and you have the token bucket limiter. So we'll actually be dealing with each of them in our upcoming videos. So let's just do add concurrency limiter. And here you can see we can actually give it the, so on our method here, we actually need the policy name, we, and we actually need now the uh, time. So here, I'll just give it, uh, let's say, uh, concurrency, that is our policy, concurrency. Then I can say here, so let me just do this. Eh? I'll do concurrency, and I can say options. I can do that. Then I can do this. I can open. Then inside here, I can say options, then dot. Uh, permit limit, I can do 10. I can also do here options dot permit. Uh, let's just say options dot Q processing order. I can also do that. Uh, 
you can actually depends on how you want to have that. So here I'll just do, so let me import something here. So using system threading dot rate limiting, then here we can say older first. So we can do that. Then on our app here, we can also do uh, options. So we'll just do options dot Q limit. You can actually have the limit of your Q. Then that is, uh, so you can do 500. So let's just do uh, four. So then you can actually close this. So once you do that, then you will actually have defined your rate uh, limit. And uh, so the next thing that we need to do is if you go to our controller here, you can actually now say enable a rate limiting and you can specify the policy. So you can say enable uh, rate limiting and you can actually have our policy here. So you can say enable a rate limit limiting so let's just do that then if we do this you are actually saying using microsoft.sp.net core rate limiting so if we do that then we our app is actually now configured to use a rate limiting uh, as you can see if we just launch our app then you'll realize that our api is just okay so you can see that is okay you can also if you want to use now the other the other policies you can actually configure it so if you just do here so we'll just comment this if i comment this uh this uh, particular one and you can actually uh, check here so you can change this to to some of the uh, policies that we have so for example the sliding window so i'll just do here sliding window limiter then here i'll just maybe do sliding then my options, I can do permit a 10. I can also do options. Then I can say dot window. Then I can say dot window is equals to time span. Then dot from seconds. Then I can put in the number of seconds. Then also I can also do here options dot uh, segment permit window. Then I can do here two. I can also have now our processing, our queue processing order. I can do all the first, then queue limit, I can still have it as uh, as a four. So that's one of them. I can also do another one. So this is the second one. So the third one, I can actually come here and I can do now the uh, token uh, bucket limiter. So here I'll just do, I'll change this to token. Uh, bucket limiter then this one you can call it token and here now we can say here token limit token limit will be 10 then you can remove these two here then you have the queue limit and you can actually say options so you can do options uh, dot uh, replenishment so replenishment period, we can have actually here as a time span and you can add a second. So you can say from seconds and you can do that. So if you do that, then, so this should be equals to, then you can also have uh, options uh, dot uh, token uh, per second, then you can say 20. Then you can also have options uh, dot auto replenishment can have this as true so that's one of the so we have done a token uh, bucket limiter we've also done sliding window limiter and we have done the concurrency limiter so we have now the sliding window then you can actually now add the uh, fixed so you can also have the fixed so if we just do this you can also have the fixed so i'll comment that so down here you can actually use the fixed uh, algorithm here so here we'll do the so here we can say fixed uh, window limiter then you can actually say this is fixed and you can remove this so or we can say this per, per limit we have that then here we can just do a window then you can have those seconds. You can have this as uh, either 10. Then we can actually remove 
these ones. So I think that is it. So we now have the fixed window a limiter. We have the token bucket limiter. We have the sliding window limiter and you have the uh, concurrency limiter. So what we'll do on the controllers, we'll actually apply the uh, limiting that you want. So based on the policy that we've defined. So I think that is it for this video. If you want to subscribe, please uh, subscribe. If you need the source code, I'll write the link down below. And I'll see you in our next episode. Bye.